And as we continue our focus on small businesses today, we speak to Tara Durtoe. She's the CEO of House of Tara in Nigeria. Thank you so much, you, uh, Tara, man. for joining us on the show today. And of course, we want to share your perspective. And you've been doing business in Nigeria for about, what, 12 years there about. Give us your experience as a small business starting up. Um, what are the biggest challenges you have faced in Nigeria? I imagine you probably say something about financing, but I guess there are probably a lot of other challenges too. Yeah, there's, um, financing obviously is one of them. Um, banks were very reluctant to finance uh, my business, for example, because they just didn't understand um, the business, whether it's um, the service part of it where you have to do makeup for people and, yeah. or brand your own product line, and they didn't understand how you would sell your own brand of products when it's not international. Mm. Uh, so that's one. Um, as we grew, it also became a challenge to attract and retain talent. And the kind of talent that in Nigeria, most people want to work in the banks, uh, they want, want to work for all companies. So to work in a small business, it, they tag us as, you know, one-man business. And mm. so they become reluctant to work for us. So it becomes very difficult um, to be able to position yourself as a company that wants to grow right. to, into a sustainable business structured uh, that can give you all the things that the banks can give you. Um, but at the same time, you know, the place where you can be all that you can be. Um, and this is what we're offering. But it's, it's become more and more difficult. Um, but even currently now with the crisis, whether it's the political religious crisis, yeah. or um, tribal crisis, uh, we are expanding. We're trying to develop our sales network and um, expand geographically. So we just recently opened in Kano, Kaduna, Iloring, yeah. um, and it's becoming more and more difficult to mm. be able to um, set targets for the branches and expect them to meet those targets because they're not able to meet the targets because it's just not safe for people to come out. Um, mm. So people want to do a wedding, but it's difficult for them to decide what dates they're going to have the wedding. They need to take permission from the government so that, you know, because there's, if there's a gathering of people, then there's a chance of Boko Haram coming to them. So that also has become a new challenge for us mm. um, that we're encountering and it's, and it's very difficult. Yeah, I can imagine. And um, clearly, this insecurity is a big challenge for everybody. And of course, the large companies also say the same. But okay, let's move on to the opportunity. Clearly, even in the context of this challenge, Nigeria, I imagine the population, the geographical spread, it's the massive. diversity, yeah. that must provide a lot of opportunities oh, for yes. SMEs. Oh, yes. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually currently in a place where I'm very excited about our about expansion and ex excited about um, taking our business out, even out of Nigeria as a, as a whole. But in Nigeria, uh, you know, there's, we are very fashionable. For, for my industry, for example, you know, um, it's a good opportunity because we're very fashionable people. Uh, makeup and cosmetics is not something you can you can't go wrong with, with because Nigerians like makeup. Um, and for different, from the different ethnic groups, whether it's the Yorubas or the Igbos, um, so it's, it's very exciting for that. Um, also, online, you know, being able to market your product online, for example, is another opportunity that we have found most recently because the young people who are the next generation of our customers mm. are coming on, going online more and more. And so they, we're looking for ways to be more um, integrated in our marketing using online platforms. Um, how do we engage our fans and our, and our um, customer base online and right. track them and then engage them consistently so that we can also sell online as well. That is you, you raised a very interesting uh, opportunity there, the online space and taking advantage of that um, as a small business. Mm. Talk to us a bit about your experience there because I, I, I hear that a lot about that being the transition mm. point for a lot of businesses. Yes, yeah. But of course, when people hear about the pension levels for mm. broadband, for instance, people mm. begin to question that as a sustainable um, mm. business model. Yeah. Um, I mean, 10 years ago, that didn't exist. Today, we're selling online. Our products are being bought online. Um, I know how much um, the impact for example, when I tweet, I know the responses that I get from people and the, I can track the age group and the demographic of people who are, who are targeting, who I'm targeting online. Um, with Facebook as well, um, that's also phenomenal. And then with what Google has done coming to Nigeria also it has been helpful. Mm. Um, and that I see is, I mean, recently we just employed two people to just work on that, just work on IT. Um, I didn't for a long time, I mean, I've always had a website, but I didn't realize how much um, sales revenue could be generated online until I started to pay more attention. And I saw that international brands were doing the same. I decided to say, okay, let's look closer at this. And I, and I have other small business owners who are also earning, getting a lot of revenue from online. So that's a new place for us. But let's talk about the place of the government and support for small businesses. I mean, clearly all, all, all over the world, it's said that the small businesses are the engine room of the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, your thoughts on the, the, the role that the government is playing to drive small business growth. I know there are some initiatives, for instance, the You Win program mm -hmm. to provide some seed capital to mm -hmm. SMEs. SMEs. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on the overall strategy for SMEs from, from the government? Um, from the, I mean, f using that as an example, I've heard about, um, for example, that that's what is being done. But recently I had a meeting with my mentees, a group of mentees, and 
you know, government is giving us X amount, they asked us to, to ask for this amount of money, whether it's 10 million, and they give you only 10% of that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's almost, you know, it's, if you ask me to give, if you ask me to tell you how much I need, then if you're not going to give me, then don't, let's not spend the time doing let's that. Let's not have the discussion. Yes, let's not have the discussion. And it, 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 was, it, was, it was sad to see that that was the situation. But I know that also NGOs, for example, are doing so much um, as well. Maybe we should talk about that, the place of NGOs in all of this, mm -hmm. you know, how they're, they're driving growth for the SMEs. Mm -hmm. um, I know some names like Leap Africa, yes. Faith Foundation yes. are doing some very um, interesting work in Nigeria. Uh, Leap Africa, for example, organize, uh, they have a yearly program twice a year, I think, all, all across Nigeria called the Business Leadership Program. And it's, it's a program to help small businesses to transition from that one-man mentality to becoming a structured, a company that has a vision, has a purpose, and knows where they're going. And it's a five-day program, but very intensive and very great, very good um, and it's not expensive it's not paying what you pay in a business school but you get mm. quality using case studies of Nigerian businesses that have outgrown from generation to generation um, there's also faith foundation who's also help who's helping small businesses to to have programs where they can train their staff because one of the things about the reason why talents won't stay is because they don't think that they're going to be developed when they're working with you but faith foundation has made courses good courses that are priced in a way that they are affordable for small businesses. So consistently you are having programs every on a monthly basis and you can't imagine the impact it has on the morale of the staff who are working with you and who see that you care about yeah, their You current. participated in that and of yes. course now that you are expanding across Nigeria, clearly it must have been beneficial experience. Extremely, for you. extremely. Wimbies as well, the Women in Business and Management, or recently organized a program called Corporate Governance. And, and it's helping us to set up our boards and teaching us how to position your business for international investment. So there are a lot of those sort of um, NGOs across Nigeria who are supporting small business, and I've been a beneficiary to that. Well, clearly the government needs to take a cue from these and yes, they have hopefully to. drive a lot more yes. development for the SMEs. Thank you yes. so much, Tara. Thank you. For joining us, Tara Dutre is the CEO of House of Tara, giving us a perspective on small businesses in Nigeria.